Ladies and gentlemen, today we have on Connor Murname. He is a content savant. We talk LinkedIn strategy, YouTube shorts, video creation. You're going to want to stick to the end to this one because it is electric. The Broke Agent presents Over Ask Podcast. Welcome to another episode of Over Ask. Today we have a very special guest, Jack of all trades, Connor Murnane is on the episode. Did I pronounce that right? I can't really, you can't yeah, really mess per- that up. Perfectly. Right? No, most, yeah. most, most mess it up. So you did pretty well. Really? Right? Oh, thank yeah. you. Connor, I say you're jack of all trades because it's just kind of like we see you everywhere. And that's why you're <laughs> on this show now. I mean, you're a LinkedIn all star. You're teaching people how to, you know, script and do video. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, is LinkedIn uh, All Star a cool badge to rock? I mean, no, yeah, cer- yeah. certainly not. I thought yeah. it was. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so I'll try to keep uh, it short. But the journey was like, I mean, maybe even back to so to be real open with this. 2009 is when I started working in real estate and tech. So I was at a company uh, called Trulia before getting acquired by Zillow, and you know, over the last decade, that's really how I got to meet and work with and learn from some of the top real estate teams across the country. And so it was just two years ago, I decided to kind of start clicking record and uh, making videos and just sort of uh, as cringy as it was at first, but learning by doing and um, it's opened up a lot of doors today. And so like, I think I told Eric earlier, like one of the I'm doing, I'm speaking at a couple of events, but like, I think this headline sort of sums up what I, I think I can help people with is um, how I've used short form videos to make six figures uh, without doing any dancing. So I've gotten really, really into video. I've gotten really into like content and distribution um, and just really nerdy into how that can help businesses. All right. So this is a perfect segue. Connor, how do you make six figures <laughs> while doing short term video without yeah. dancing? Yeah, six to be very clear. So I, I haven't figured out the seven yet, but um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. It, I, th- I think it it definitely starts with like, there's a lot of layers to this, but like a couple things that come to mind is it's a very long-term approach. So you're not talking about ads where you're getting, you know, leads and converting people like next month, like you're building sort of brand equity. And I know you guys know this, you're very much in the, you know, in the media game, you do it with your own, you know, businesses and personal brands, but you're building kind of what I've called like relationship equity. And then over time, when the right opportunities come up for the right people, then you know, things line up and whether that's like, you know, random, you know, sort of odd jobs that, you know, Eric, I've even heard you kind of doing over the years that, that's led up to this. To, what? What uh, odd well, jobs have I done over the yeah, years? Eric, the hell are Eric, you talking like, about? Like, Eric cons- like, consult- yeah. like social media <laughs> consulting Mose and like lawns. training and like, yeah, no, you're right. You're uh, right. And like the merch and like, I mean, you've really, yeah. like, I mean, you've, you've definitely like dabbled with some stuff. Of course. Yeah. I worked at a crypto company <laughs> he's called dabbled Alpha little, Token for He's, he's for dabbled with some six stuff. Months. Okay. Sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You you sold homes or you know a few of them too. Yeah, I'm not not gonna. That was a that was a layup, but yeah, I'll leave it at that. That, um, but you know, it's actually a fun quick story on that. I don't think most people know this one because I never even posted like this whole episode. But I reached out to Eric a few years ago um, when I just started getting getting into the video and was like, "Hey, I'm interviewing like you know random people and would love to like you know uh, click record sometime." And so we hopped on Zoom and just recorded a conversation that I never posted, but like I took a few pieces from that. And so this is obviously way, like I shared little like short reels from that. And was I aware of, that you were recording me? Yeah, yeah, you, you okay. agreed. You agreed the whole thing was- uh, Interesting. Yeah, you know, um, was planned. Clips. No recollection. Yeah. Yeah, but one of them, you were saying how you're gonna start this media company and how you're really gonna disrupt the real estate media space. And so you called your shot like a Babe Ruth man and, and uh, you're That's definitely right. doing it. So, the, so giving your flowers, uh, to you on that but who does thank you there you go that's the clip right there connor there Weird, weirdly <laughs> enough i didn't get the invite to uh hop on a zoom with you and click record so. this was years ago matt this was actually yeah. i remember this yeah. vividly this was like three years ago like pre-pandemic yeah. was yeah, this pre, exactly. pre-clubhouse it was pre-clubhouse yeah pre pre-clubhouse pre-pandemic oh. and uh I think it might have even taken a few tries, Eric. I think you gave like your your classic, like you had like a wedding in Mexico or something. So you, oh yeah, that was a lie. That's, yeah. That was your go. That's always your go-to. No, you had like I, four no. of those that year. I actually did have a wedding <laughs> in Mexico. I've been to Honestly, four in Mexico. Everyone <laughs> listening, if Eric says he's at a wedding, he is one thousand percent telling the truth. I have never met someone who goes to more weddings 
than Eric Simon. <laughs> nice. Got a lot of friends, you know. The, the wedding excuse. Always is the bridesmaid, excuse. never the bride. Exactly. Yeah. Except I am the bride. <laughs> you are. Congratulations. March, March 11th. Everybody that's listening to this, you're invited. <laughs> Tucson, Arizona. RSVP in the link below. But Connor, you have done an incredible job at being omnipresent on all these platforms. Like I think we also came across you in Clubhouse, right? Like weren't you hosting yeah. a bunch of rooms? Yeah, I um, definitely was going to say we had a couple of good rooms there in Clubhouse. And so like, I think part of it was lucky I was super early on that. So like uh, you, you guys know, like there were some of those real early days where it was just like red hot. And um, but yeah, that as well just kind of was another place where I made a lot of, a lot of relationships, learned more things about videos and, and social. Um, actually, one of the like, I think one of the like debates you guys had that maybe never was finished. Maybe you guys can clear this up on the show, but um, if you you two uh, in a UFC fight was like a was like a lined up question on stage. I don't know if it ever got <laughs> answered. I mean, Who if Matt win? and I fought in yeah. UFC, yeah, I mean, that's, that's obvious. Matt yeah. watches more UFC than I do. Yeah, so he probably have a strategic advantage, but I'm 6'3", 190 pounds of pure muscle, athleticism, hand-eye coordination. So I think it'd be Wait, close. Would you be like a striker though, or like ground game or like what's your... I'm not trying to get on the ground with anyone. I'm just going to strike him. No, I, yeah. He'd have, you know, one right hook and he'd be out. He'd be at a, at a, at a, at a <laughs> wedding in right Mexico. Hook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to mess up the face here, you know? I'm not yeah. I'm not trying to get no, any yeah. fights we're, here. We're lovers, not fighters for a yeah. good reason, right? We're not going to, you know, exactly. crazy. This, but Connor, this is, this is about you. I mean, yeah, this isn't yeah, about Eric and I getting in a fight in the, in the octagon. <laughs> right. no, that, that might be the biggest uh, event in the future that you guys can pump up. Boxing. Maybe boxing is like Yeah, real estate rumbles. Right. We'll have yeah. other people participate in this. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. We'll, we'll commentate. Um, yeah. So, but, yeah, we're in Clubhouse. And, we're in, yeah. and yeah, I try, I try to be everywhere. I mean, here, here's, I think, what Eric was getting at that I, I feel almost everyone can kind of like, especially, you know, this is something we can even – I think everyone can do if you're creating videos or creating any sort of content, it takes time, energy, or some amount of resources. And so it's, it, you have that sort of, you know, call it an asset, but if you only post it in one channel, like you're just not getting as much value as you can. So if you're sharing it in as many places as possible, you're going to get more juice from it. And so I've always just kind of looked at that as the underlying, you know, if I'm going to put all this effort into doing this shit, then I might as well try and get the most from it. So I try to post it everywhere I can. So what are the top three platforms you recommend realtors being on right now? Um, okay. So I'll even give like kind of a top five right now, but yeah. I think, but I think maybe in order, um, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube shorts, TikTok, and then email batch, I think is just way underrated in that. So like, I think you guys do a good job at setting out your newsletter, but agents could even if they have a 30 videos from the last two months or something, they could send like an email batch that has like the thumbnail plus the caption. And, and then you've, it's got Matt's six last videos that he's done and sending that to his whole database. Like people I've seen it and I'm, like people will just click into your socials. It's also a good way if you want to drive them to your TikTok or your LinkedIn or whatever, but um, email. That's a great five. idea, Matt, you should do that. You should send out like my top five funny videos every month to your email list. I think that's a really good way to recycle that content and a great way to just build your list and give them another way to, to consume it. Yeah. yeah. More people in general should be sending out their videos in, in an email blast. Yeah. Yeah. And but we were, we just talked at a Berkshire Hathaway today. And this is something that we touched upon is how agents should be growing their email list way more and utilizing Instagram stories to do that. Cause I don't see any agents. I mean, of course there are some that are putting a link in their story and saying like, Hey, check this out, like I send that every week, you're going to get market updates. You're going to get discounts and here's a couple of videos. Mm -hmm. So I think agents listening to that should be utilizing that way more. Yeah. And a good way to like maybe bounce over to LinkedIn. Cause I know we wanted to touch on that. Yeah. It's like, I had um, a buddy, this is like just a week ago. He's maybe, he's all about reels. He's been going hard on reels. He's created maybe a hundred plus reels this year in 2022. And he, he finally went and started posting his first like five over the last like month on LinkedIn and then sent a screenshot of a message from a past client that shot him, you know, a, a DM on LinkedIn and said like, Hey, like, uh, good to see you again. And you know, I, we need to catch up because I need to sell my home. So like, I mean, just by uh, taking a few, just copy and paste clicks over, you know, from what he's already been spending his time on, 
um, it's, it, it can create real leads. Yeah. So I want to talk about LinkedIn because I really know nothing about it. Same. Um, what is, what is so good? Let's just, what is so good about LinkedIn? Why should people be on LinkedIn? I mean, it's just another, like I try to stay pretty neutral on any of these places, like and not fall in love with it one platform or another, but it's just another place where there's content and there are a lot of people that are in your network that go on there every single month. And there's just a lot of shitty content that's on there. So it's easy to stand out if you're halfway decent. And so I think the numbers I just like looked up earlier, I like even wrote a note here, it's over 300 million monthly users, but then they have 1% of their users post at least once a week. So like the, wow. the, the supply demand is just so like low there that there's a, if you just have anything decent, you'll, you'll get some consumption. And again, if you're already spending the time to make these videos in other places, it's like, it's like really like two or three taps to upload it. But um, a couple of, I mean, there's a couple of like even other tips I have within LinkedIn, but that's the biggest thing that stands out is if is the supply demand. And I guess the audience is more directed toward what you would want. It's not dancing teenagers or, you know, on yeah. TikTok or yeah. whatever. Like these are professionals for the most part who you can directly get connected yeah. with. Yeah, I've had heard someone say they think of it as like, I mean, it's it's this it's the social app that's like business networking where everyone's interested in like money and growth and just like um, a little bit more matured in that way. So like, I mean, some of the videos I've posted that have done well on YouTube shorts, like I can it's like clearly a number of teenagers that are commenting that I've triggered in one way or another. But like but like on LinkedIn, it's almost always like a a little bit more of like an elevated conversation from the people that are viewing. And it might be a lot less views, but I think the depth of the, of the consumption is, is there. And organic reach is crazy on LinkedIn, right? This is, yeah. this is the one platform that I know Matt and myself have not touched at all. Like yeah. broke agent media has a LinkedIn and we're trying to publish on it. We do have someone publishing on it, but I haven't even like looked at the analytics and we could go into that Connor. I know on our phone call before you said we're making a bunch of mistakes. So I definitely want to hear about those. <laughs> But first, I just want to start with what should agents be posting on LinkedIn? Is it they're just solds? They're just listed? Is it video? Is it blog posts? Like, I have no idea what people are publishing here. I mean, I'm just kind of, um, and maybe this is like the lazy route, but I'm just like, whatever you're posting anywhere else. Like, I've actually just out of pure, like, capacity, like, I don't make LinkedIn specific content. Like, I could probably tell you it's the stuff that works a little bit better, but like, I think just to answer your question, like if you're posting somewhere, just start, just start showing up on that platform and then you can kind of um, alter it. But to get more into like, I think some of the tactics for LinkedIn and like, I'll even tie this to like your, um, to your BAM page. So the first thing is, and a lot of these principles I've seen you share on, on IG. So like they're almost the same across LinkedIn, but like right now on BAM, you're just, or, you know, however it's getting posted, it's just posting a link to the blog. So it's an external link to an out of LinkedIn website, which obviously just like all these, they don't want to do that. They want to keep you inside. And so uploading that same information native. So like if you just copy and pasted the text and then did a text post, so that way it stays inside LinkedIn. And, or if you upload a video, those would do really well. You guys have done zero videos on LinkedIn. Whoever so, is running the LinkedIn is fired. If they're just posting <laughs> links, that is psychotic. Even I feel like I would understand that. Do, do yeah. thumbnails even show up? Or is it? are we literally um, just publishing links with no context? It's like a pretty soft thumbnail. So it looks okay. yeah, pretty like automated. But um, so native content, whether it's text, image, or video, I think that's like the first sort of rule of thumb, just like for most of these apps. And then... Second thing is because there's such a high amount of like people on there, but no content, again, no good content that's out there. Although they don't show business pages a lot, like business pages are kind of F. So this is, I'll get to like the, the point, um, you know, of how to get around that. But whenever someone comments on my post, because there's again, not a lot of content out there, it takes that person's network and then shows that post to like everyone in their network. It's kind of like the real old Facebook days where you would just see, you know, your friends interacting with a stranger or something. And so if you can get people to engage um, and comment, then that will really rev up, you know, the amount of uh, exposure it'll, it'll get. And, and that's kind of the other, like, last point I was thinking is the human profiles just do so much better. Like, um, if you had, 
whoever posting that content on behalf of like your Eric profile, on behalf of your Matt profile. And then of course, like tagging Bam and connecting and all that stuff. But the human profiles do a lot better too. Better than business profiles. Like 10 times better. Okay. Are, are there any, like when you first started LinkedIn, do you request a bunch of people? Like should, should people be doing that with other agents? Like how should agents yeah. get their following besides just posting? Okay, that's a really good question too. It's kind of, um, so remember like early, early IG days, like the whole follow and follow. So that's kind of a connection request on LinkedIn. You could kind of like manufacture your way to getting five, 10,000, you know, followers and kind of look like it's there, but they obviously won't have like the connection to you in like a more meaningful way. So they probably won't be engaging with your content and you'll probably just have a low you know, engagement ratio. So I think it's a mixture of quality and quantity. Okay. So should agents, if I'm at Compass, be requesting other Compass agents and other like people I, in the industry or? No, I think it's actually more just like back to like your like genuine network. So like, you know, like Matt, like I looked at your profile and I know you have more past clients than you do LinkedIn connections. So like that's the lowest hanging fruit I'd start with. Like even if it's hiring a VA, like LinkedIn connection request with every single one of your past clients. That's probably like the very first layer you know, you would start with. And then, and then maybe it's other people that you know in your database and then maybe it's other real estate pros and so on. But yeah, um, I get, I get emails all the time that someone has wanted to connect with me on LinkedIn and I don't even know how to sign into yeah, my profile. It's, it's Same. Exactly. I don't know my password. <laughs> yeah. it, it was something that we used in like 2014, 2015 to like apply to jobs. I feel like it was kind yeah. of used as more of your second resume as opposed to a content platform. It was kind of like a recruiter, like sales yeah. site. And um, I mean, it's crazy. Actually, 2017 kind of sounds like a long time ago, but they weren't, they didn't even, you couldn't even upload videos to LinkedIn before 2017. So like, they're still just so late to everything that um, there's a lot of opportunity. So videos performing the best, would you say on LinkedIn? Um, as far as like depth, getting DMs, getting people that like you might want for like more business results or meaningful outcomes, a hundred percent. But, um, right now, like image posts or text posts get a lot of reach also. Okay. Now let's, let's, you do a lot of video now. Um, you have a very, um, soothing voice. Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that's what it is. A very nice, nice voice. Very nice yeah. to listen to. I will say. Yeah, perfect very, teeth. Perfect yeah, teeth also. Teeth. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank Symmetrical you. face. Yeah. yeah. Good looking. Eric's jealous. Yeah. yeah. Well, Eric, I totally uh, connected. That's why like one of my favorite reels was when you did the Invisalign mm -hmm. bit. I mean, yeah. Just yeah. finished my cycle, actually, as you can see oh, here. Oh, congrats. Yeah. There you thank go. You. Thank you. Yeah. This guy's a go mess. Ahead, you should see all the things. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so you were saying uh, how to do short form video and make six figures doing short form video and not dancing. So what are you teaching agents to do exactly? Yeah. Like, yeah. Cool. So, cause every agent's different. Like I like to do comedy stuff, but someone else might be super analytical. So how do you kind of tailor it to them? Cool. Great question. So first part is it's definitely more people that are like going from zero to a hundred. So maybe they haven't shown up on video at all, or maybe they've posted twice in the last six months and they just need, they need to figure out how to have like consistency and, and actually like a, you know, a, a plan to get going. So that's kind of like a little bit more of the who, but to, to take one more step back, like I initially started having people reach out to me, like different types were actually buyers and sellers here in San Diego. Like I've never, and so full transparency, I've never had my license. I've never shown a home. Like, I don't know the first thing about that, um, but it was cool. I got to refer some of these people to some friends and family in the area. And, and, uh, and then I started even getting like real estate agents asking me which team they or brokerage they should join. And again, I have no like direct tire affiliation to that. But then the, what started to become like the most common question, probably even most recently is like, how do I, how do I edit and make videos like yours? How do I like actually get captions like that? Like, how do I do videos kind of a thing? So it's really the, the, the person that again, sees the value in doing video, but doesn't have either the, confidence or the experience that you might both of you guys might have with actually executing and so i'll do a mixture of different things from you know helping people with you know custom writing their scripts helping them actually line up a videographer or getting it actually recorded and then what to do with like post-production editing so that way it's a tight you know 30 second 
video with captions or something on top of it. But um, I do a mixture of that, um, as, you know, for, for people on video. What's the number one mistake you see agents making on video mm. or a few mistakes? Yeah. Uh, probably is not even like, okay. Maybe first one that comes to mind is like not being fast enough. Like it's just too slow and like too like long winded of a message and it's just not tight enough, but maybe even a bigger mistake is just like not having like, you know, uh, like intriguing enough hooks. Like it's too either just like, straightforward or vanilla or predictable like there's just not a clear enough reason of why they should watch past two seconds and you know you guys know more than anybody like people have like you know one second before they're scrolling on so hooks and then tight enough messaging um, are probably the first two things that come to mind and like even matt when i looked i was like trying to like apply kind of the same formula to like looking at some of your videos like a lot of yours within the first two seconds it's very clear like who you're sort of speaking to and what's kind of like in it for you know where the story is sort of going but you don't even give away the whole story like you know you'll kind of leave a little bit of intrigue there so i think that that like some just comes incredibly i'm sure like natural to, to you know like a lot of people but um for other people it's just it takes time to get that momentum and i was very much that way like i you know it's taken me now a couple of years to even get slightly more comfortable with video yeah it's that video retention that is the most important thing for that watch time for yeah. the algorithm and for your performance. And Matt, yeah. you do do a great job, but you never click off your video. You never are too long winded. It's like you said, you, you speak like really quickly. So you might have to watch it again. You get it out there so quickly that no one's going to just like flick by. It's like, you're going to watch the entire thing. Yeah. And we've talked about that before. Like there's some great creators um, that we've talked about and it's just, you watch their video and it's a great idea, but it's not executed properly. Mm -hmm. um, whether that's being too long winded or they're not getting their message across like how it should, or they just kind of miss on the message. Like the message is there, the creator's there and it's just, they miss. It's like, there's a lot that goes into it to, to really make it hit as a full video that people are going to stay and watch and yeah. like and share. And I mean, that stuff can be discouraging too. You know, if you're like just starting to create videos and put that out and you don't really get any traction or it's like, it's like crickets. Like you, I had this moment that like it, sometimes this reminds me, Eric, of what, cause you used to say is in clubhouse, but like I posted a reel and like, it was just like dead for the first 20 minutes. And I was like, I'm going to delete this. Like, yeah. that, like I have to, I have to like <laughs> remove this immediately, but like, um, <laughs> but like it actually ended up doing okay. Yeah. And so I think, it's tough because like if people can get some traction or see the light, you know, if they can get that first DM that actually leads to like a real business opportunity for them, then they, they really become a believer that can be consistent. But if people don't get off to like, you know, if they don't get a good start or get momentum, it's, it can be really discouraging. By the way, the new Instagram algorithm takes longer to settle in for these videos. Matt, you were texting me about this recently. You had a video that did nothing for the first five or 10 minutes and then started to pick up. So as yeah. it evolves to kind of a TikTok like algorithm where sometimes you have to wait 40 minutes to an hour to even get a couple of views or likes, Instagram seems to be heading in that direction. So if you're listening to this and you post a video and it does nothing for the first 10 minutes, hang on for a little bit. Yeah. You know? Hold yeah. your horses before you delete it. Yeah. Did you see they merged the video, like the old videos with reels? So now it's just one yeah. uh, like column. And I, I kind of have this like, sort of prediction that the whole feed the whole grid is just going to turn into the reels column just like tiktok you know looks i like. would yeah that seems to be where and tiktok just introduced 10 minute video or yeah, geez. A like little vlogs bit ago. basically yeah <laughs> and then and instagram stories. stories now you could upload longer so i just did yeah. one you know if you did like a 30 second story it would break it down into two 15 second segments i just uploaded one and now it just plays all the way through which is great for links and for tagging and everything and for like stickers so instead of having to break it up, it's now one story. And you could also reshare or share at the same time your reels to Instagram and to Facebook now. And yeah. if you want to do that, go to your settings, go to account, and then you have to toggle that thing on. And now you don't have to upload it twice, which is great. Yeah. For so Facebook reels. it's almost like they're sending mixed messages though, because it's like they're rewarding short form, but then they keep adding all this long form. And then when I'm doing like a short form video, like 15 seconds or under when I share it to my story, the whole video is in my story. So people are less likely to go to the video and comment on the video and engage with the video, which 
in turn gives it more engagement and, and sends it out to more people. So it's like a weird, like I'm trying to figure it out, to be honest. You can throw a sticker on your post so people can't see it. I know that's kind of like cringe to do that, but right. so people don't see the visualization, you could just throw like a huge yeah, just you know, giant, baseball or something over yeah, it. Yeah, a giant zucchini. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, there's like just a lot of things and it's constantly changing. Yeah. Um, Connor, do you have any videos still on your page? Actually, Eric and I were just talking about this earlier. Still on your page that are like super cringe that you didn't delete? Oh yeah, I have like a hundred of them. I mean, when I was <laughs> when I was first doing like the interviews and like pulling clips from those, I mean, I was like myself googling like how do you edit these and like it's just so format like the formatting is so like it's like this small on a huge screen and like you know so I just left a lot of those up there, um, which sometimes I swear like is has, has throttled my page probably to this day some, but like I just it's, I think it's one of those where. You know, if, if you're really looking at this as like the next, like, I'm sure the both of you will be posting videos for 10 plus years. So it's like kind of whatever happens over the short term, I don't think is going to matter as much whether the algorithm changes or the strategy. Like you'll probably just always be in this new, you know, approach with video. Yeah, You just have to adapt. Were you always, did you always have high quality video or did you start no. on just like an iPhone? Yeah. Um, for the longest time, I mean, even up to, until like maybe six plus months ago, I was just taking the IG lives and then downloading those. And that's like the worst quality ever just because it's streaming and it's like right. the, the iPhone camera. But um, And you I've were done, still getting pretty good engagement from those? I mean, not from the, not the live itself, but pull, pulling those clips yeah. out and then putting those. And because remember, you take that clip and you can post that on LinkedIn, you can post that in other places. So it was... I'd say more than anything, it got me like back to like thinking of who the type of people I can help. It got me from like zero videos and zero like direction, zero comfort with being on camera to like, how can I have a process that will get me some consistency that will get me to like where I can then feel more comfortable looking at the camera, can then, you know, invest more resources into quality camera, all that kind of stuff. So for me, it was more of like a, a way to actually practice or get comfortable. You're still doing these, right? I remember you started this series a couple of years ago, I feel like. And yeah. I see you pop up on Instagram Live on a weekly basis. So talk a little bit about that, the strategy and how effective it's been. Yeah, I haven't actually done, I haven't hosted a live in uh, probably like six months now. Like also like people will all join theirs or something. But it was, I think it's two ways. Like, and this was, this is when like the Instagram's like more based on like the network versus like the recommendation sort of algorithm. But um, if you, you know, if, if, if we go live, you know, together, then obviously it notifies the other people's network. And, and so I think there's still some like value in doing that approach today, because even if you interview someone on StreamYard or in a podcast or on a Zoom or in person, like obviously then like we're going to take the clips from, I'm going to post about how we we're on the podcast today and then my network will see it. And and then you share all the micro clips after and like same thing will happen. So you get exposure to new audiences. You, you kind of get that, you know, relationship, trust transfer. So I just think that approach is also a good, almost like, you know, micro influencer, you know, strategy for creating content. And you don't even have to be comfortable looking at the camera. You can just focus on the conversations with the people. Yeah, the lives are interesting. We tried, well, we, we did a bunch of them. Like we did them almost every week for a little bit. We had a game show a couple of times. It would be Matt, myself, Dan O'Neill. We'd call people up, ask them like funny real estate questions, but we never really found a real groove on like what works on live. And I haven't really seen too many people doing something. The interview shows are good, but where I'm like constantly entertained. Like I feel like yeah. we, Matt and I always need that like constant, reminder that what we're doing is working while it's happening so even if we see that number drop from 300 people down to 150 people you're like damn it i'm literally <laughs> like people like hate this right yeah now. we just immediately <laughs> stopped the live yeah, yeah. exactly so yeah. do you have any recommendations for agents on how they should go live and what they should do with lives i think it's more just looking at the live as like a, a recorded phone call and it's just the way for them to actually get content so yeah. it's it's less about having a huge audience at the actual live you know show or episode and more just about getting pra you know practice in front of the camera and getting usable clips that they can take away from that because i do think 
you know, for a while I've really felt this and I think probably now more than ever, like short form video is really, um, you know, really hot at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, for sure it is. And I've heard a lot about YouTube shorts. Um, I don't know. I think mine's broken because <laughs> my views are not, not going well. You have on the that. only broken YouTube short <laughs> in the world. I don't no, know. It's, it's almost like TikTok where some of them can do like nothing and some of them can just hit like, um, I've like, I here, I've like 22 subscribers on YouTube. Massive. Um, but like, but like some of them, some of them will do like 50 views and some of them will do like 4,000 views. And so like, I think it is like TikTok where it's just, if it, if it hits, it'll roll. And same thing. If you open up that app from your phone, they're changing it to be more and more and more like TikTok. Like they're getting, they're making the shorts feed more prominent and I'd be willing to bet like TikTok, it'll just be the default when you open up the app, you know, eventually. Talking, yeah, we, uh, sorry, go, go, Eric. No, you go. Um, I was just to say something dumb. We just started doing YouTube shorts. We were uploading like podcast clips and stuff. And now we're doing the ones that are kind of me talking about Instagram strategy or Byron giving like a mm-hmm. news update. It's very title heavy. Yeah. So yeah. just like YouTube is, you know, SEO focus and like you have to have something that's searchable. We're really tweaking the way we upload these with titles that are searchable. So that's way different than TikTok. Like TikTok, no one reads the caption. Mm. Instagram, people barely read the caption. So YouTube, even if the video kind of sucks, that title is extremely important for shorts. And you're right. Shorts can get thousands of views with a little amount of subscribers. So this is probably the best time ever right now to grow a YouTube channel by using your Instagram reels and your TikToks and uploading those to shorts. You have the content already. Start a YouTube channel, start uploading to shorts. Big time. Yeah. You can even do like a podcast like this and then reuse it all for TikTok reels and YouTube shorts. And the shorts could actually in turn grow the long tor- long form podcast yep. that you're actually what, doing. What about, I, I just want to ask a real quick question. Cause man, I, I seriously have so much respect for what you guys have been doing with the amount of content you've been cranking out. I mean, just across the board. And I know you're both busy, like running actual businesses and lives. Like, I mean, what have, what have you noticed since, I mean, cause this is, when was the actual like launch of BAM? I mean, April like, 18th. It's engraved so, in my head forever. So like any or like D-Day. Is there any like what's the newest learning you both have had? Like just like a real quick, I don't know, thing that comes to mind in the last four months that you could that allowed you to crank the volume up as much as you did? Well, it became my full-time job kind of like right before that too. So okay. when I was like dabbling doing like half real estate, half content creation, I always was sending myself mixed messages, but we went all in broke agent kind of like around the pandemic. And then this podcast kind of like you hear that drawer over my head. This is ridiculous. They're rebuilding a cabinet right now. My apologies, everyone. <laughs> um, but this podcast kind of started the evolution of longer form content in the actual media company. So what I've learned is it's really fun to do all this content. And I've learned like how to produce content that is more educational for agents and kind of what works for agents from an engagement perspective with news headlines and clips. And it's not all funny stuff at all. Like BAM is probably 80% like news and actual like tactics for agents and Mm -hmm. 20% humor with our podcast and a couple Mm -hmm. other uploads like between two lock boxes. So growing that Instagram following is way different than growing this Instagram following the broke agent and just trying to produce something that's funny. Like we're okay. If we get less engagement on an Instagram post on broke agent media, it's not like the end of the world there because we're just, we're trying to just pump up the volume with content and then getting link clicks is something that we're really focused on too, on our Instagram stories. How do we get more link clicks? Do we do a link that says read here? Do we do one that says learn more? Do we do votes? Do we do questions? That type of thing. And then our now focus is grow the YouTube subscriptions. And because we think we could have the most powerful YouTube channel in real estate with the amount of shows we have and education we're putting out and humor we're putting out and how to get email subscribers because the email list building is still the best way to produce content. When we film an over ask, edit it, put it up. When we send out that email, the numbers jump by like hundreds. So you still have people opening up. And then that part of it's really fun too, is how do we craft our email subjects? How do we craft the subheader? How many blocks do we have in the actual email? Which one do we lead off with? Which one's getting more open rates? So 
it's all these new statistics that I I love way more than just looking at like an Instagram following mm -hmm. to see like what's working, what's not. So it's trial and error, but we're getting in a real groove right now. Yeah. I don't know if that answered it, but it did. You guys are on fire. I mean, you're building a ton and like uh, it's it's I'm sure it's exciting because like there's probably not another single like real estate media company that's even on the same like content planet. Right. Like, yeah. Doing kind of old school. Well, we see, and I've said this before, and, you know, Inman is the OG with this, but they're not producing video content yeah. for yeah. Instagram. It's still static images. Right. So we really see a space where we could just be like the leader for video content. And yeah. we understand that the Instagram post could be a blog post in itself. And that going to that link is not really how a lot of Gen Z people um, consume content. So we want to mm -hmm. give them the value in that post right there. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about BAM is the kind of quote unquote ambassadors are all like there. A lot of them are big influencers of yeah. the space. So like, that's just like, you know, a, a lot of people put their trust in those people, which in turn puts your trust in BAM. Yeah. yeah. I think you, I think you nailed that part too. I mean, it's not just like contributors that have some, you know, quality content. I mean, these are like the most trusted people like in the space. So associating with them and, you know, back and forth. I mean, it's a huge, yeah, we're, we're trying to build the biggest network of creators, you know, literally like the Barcelona of real estate. I mean, yeah. we always use that analogy, but that yeah. is what we're trying to do. Like Taya DeCarlo is coming on. She's doing a podcast. I think we're launching that like right after the Tom Ferry summit. So we're just trying to get everyone with huge audiences that are entertaining and that know what they're talking about and provide constant education and humor to agents. So Yeah. Well, let's get Dave Courtney on the on the podcast sometime. Yeah, let's get him on that the would show. be fantastic. <laughs> he's my favorite. I love yeah, him. He's great. <laughs> but just uh, before we wrap up here, we're talking about short form content. What I was trying to say before is how before their time was Vine. Oh, no, I know, right? You're just, right. Just a little too early. Like, <laughs> it's insane. They like they would have been the biggest platform going if they had it came out just why, before TikTok. 100%. Why did they fizzle out? Like what what happened? The the creator what? just took it down. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I it, remember it did get oversaturated with a lot of like like the original Vine feed was incredible. And that's like yeah. birth all these Instagram comedians and YouTube comedians, yeah. it, it, like the uh, the Paul brothers and everything. Yeah, Bobby just said Twitter bought Vine. Oh. And I guess just destroyed it. Um, <laughs> but Vine go. was electric and was the oh. original TikTok. Like you could, the, the editing was so easy in it too. It's just like you film one second here, one second here. It's that snappy style that would crush so much right now. So good. My yeah. Vine was... It never popped, but I had some uh, insanely good vines. Yeah. Uh, but they weren't niche at all. But it was. Can you still find your vines? You can. There's still like a vine portal, right? Where you can find old vines. I think. Down download those. I don't know. Yeah, I Bobby don't know. But anyways, links in here. I, I know. I know. I don't know what the hell to do. Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> click on stop the whole podcast. Yeah, you want to just um, pop in here, Bobby, and let us know. <laughs> just yeah. kidding. Don't actually. Um. No, but I was just thinking of that the other day. Like, that's insane. Like, it was all five second video, and you had to get so creative with it. And yeah, the the editing was amazing because it so was literally simple. just like second there, second there, second there. So good. I yeah. love Vine. I'm Vine sure though that helped. I'm sure that helped a ton with giving you both like a foundation for you know the platforms today. Hundred like, percent. And kind the of head start. Yeah. And this is a point I've made probably on every podcast, but getting on all these platforms like you do, Connor, like you were so early to, to Clubhouse and that's great for audio and networking. And you're probably a better podcaster and speaker because of it and probably more confident like hosting rooms. And yeah. it's good for Discord because Discord has that too. Anytime a new platform comes on, you got to try it out because TikTok is now Instagram Reels and Instagram Stories with Snapchat. So that's what we do a good job of. And that's what agents should do. Because yeah. that's how you stay ahead of everybody. Otherwise, like you have to do this too. It's not even like just for content. Like if you want your business to survive in the next 20 years, you have to be producing content on all these platforms. Getting a park bench ad isn't going to do shit anymore. No. Yeah. So many more people now are literally going. Like me personally, if I want a service, I go to Instagram. Yeah. Like that's just how I, and I think more and more people do that. Yeah, they're searching on Instagram and TikTok way more too. Yeah, for sure. Connor, any parting words of wisdom? Anything 
you want to say anything you hate about us or something? No, man. Seriously, like I said, I just want to give you both kudos for how consistent you've been. I know you also just got podcast of the year. So just thank you for having me. This is a fun combo. And, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to at some point we'll have um, – because I know I was going to have you two headline that event, remember, like a year or two years ago. So at yeah. some point we'll we'll connect at probably at one of these conferences or have a, have a part Eric two. Eric was at a wedding. Yeah, I'll yeah. be at a wedding. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He literally I was, was at a wedding and I'll be I'll at a believe, wedding. Yeah. I'll believe it. I'll believe it. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll definitely uh, all get together. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, it, for the people at home, Connor, where can they follow you? What, what should they do? Um, I mean, I like to think it's wherever they're most on. You know, if they're on one platform or another, I should be there, probably with the exception of Twitter. But like, I'm mostly hanging on Instagram. What's your username? um it's I know oh, it, so but... oh yeah yeah connor it's just my full name with underscore in between so connor yeah. underscore Mernin. everybody go follow connor right now give this video a like if you enjoyed this episode a ton of knowledge bombs dropped by all three of us i think this is a great episode and make sure you're subscribed to the youtube down below so you don't miss the next one because the next guest we have matt oh my god electric <laughs> i know i don't even I know who it is <laughs>